Great. Thank you so much, Don, for that introduction. My colleague Anna and I are really excited to be here. And, um, you know, as, as, as Don mentioned, um, some of you may have seen the earlier iteration of, of this portal, which um, started um, just over a year and a half ago as a collaboration between, um, between uh, CTNY, between um, the John R. Oshai Foundation and Cornell's uh, uh, ILR School, School of Industrial and Labor Relations. Um, but then um, over the summer of last year, we received some uh, funding via the New York State Library through the CARES Act funds, um, which led us to the statewide portal. So I'll walk you through a little bit of the history, but before we do that, just real quick, um, wanted to do a poll, get a sense of um, you know um, where folks are at in the room when it comes to their comfort level with um, census data and mapping tools. Um, so when you have a moment, if you could answer um, the poll, um, because you know um, one of the issues that comes up with mapping, and particularly mapping anything related to broadband, is that um, you know the maps just honestly aren't that good. The, um, you know, there's been uh, many studies and articles written about the issue using FCC data. So the FCC has a form, it's called Form 477, um, which they send out to the, to the internet service providers. It's all self-reported data. And essentially the way that works is that if one track, um, if, uh, if, if, if there's a, a particular level of service advertised in one census track, um, then that entire census tract is counted as covered, whether it's actually present, whether that service is actually present for everyone in that, in that um, census tract or not. <clears throat> so one of the things um, that I just kind of want to highlight here in this article that came out in the Washington Post is that, um, you know, it, it, the, that last line around maps are a prerequisite to funding the broadband future, uh, the, the broadband networks of the future. <clears throat> So we know we need the data to make programming choices, to make funding allocation choices. And you know, what we'll argue here is that, you know, what is that future we're looking for? Is it a future of you know, sort of more of the same connectivity or are we really looking to really build digital equity um, you know, across our communities? So this is probably the version that some of you have seen. Um, you know, this is back when Curtis uh, at, at, at Oshai connected uh, CTNY with Rusty Weaver at Cornell. Um, so we're looking at the, you know, Western County, uh, Western New York uh, region plus Monroe County, and you, we had we had a really good, we had a really solid functioning portal. It was really straightforward, really simple. Um, you know, I was expecting like you know static PDFs of maps, but Rusty is kind of a GIS wizard, and he put together, um, you know, this this uh, portal just really focusing on a few metrics. So what I'm really excited to share with you today is, you know, if this is how it started, this is where it's at now. Um, and so Anna will drop a link in a sec um, in the chat for you all to check. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, where we're at, um, you know, with the statewide portal. So <clears throat> when you click, it takes a little minute to load. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of orient you to what you're looking at right here. So on the left hand, we have a map <clears throat> of the state of New York that maps just one variable. So in this map, it's uh, what we're looking at is just the percentage of households with no computing devices. Now on the right hand side, you can see five different data indices. So that's percentage of households with broadband at home, you know, the household by connection type, lack of connectivity for children and presence of selected devices. Now, one thing I want to point out um, real quick is that if you hover over the, over the map, um, you know, you, we have these different pop-up buttons. So just so uh, there's no confusion, because it can get a little, it can get a little wonky sometimes. But if you hover over this, uh, the play button here, um, the little triangle, if you want to just pan, so you can drag and move around the mouse, just make sure the map, excuse me, just make sure that this this button, the pan button, is uh, selected. So that way you can kind of move around the map. Now, what's really powerful about this portal is that you've got uh, seven different ways of geographically zooming in to where you want to focus in on. You can look at it by public library system, by county, by three different layers or levels of um, political boundaries, by county subdivision, as well as by zip code. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit. We'll do an activity later, but um, I'm just going to kind of show you how this works. So first of all, as we're looking at this, you'll notice like, um, for example, the number of households with no broadband internet connection across the state of New York is, uh, is about a million, okay? A million households. 
Now, what's really powerful about this portal is let's say we want to zoom into Erie County. I'm going to check, I'm going to go to the county section of the, of the drop down menu. Um, I'm going to uncheck all. The map's going to go blank. That's totally okay. But as soon as I check Erie, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up. It's going to zoom me in. And if it, if it looks like that, um, you, can, um, you can hit the home button and that should zoom you in right to your selected geography. So now we're focused just on um, Erie County. Now, what you'll notice is all of these numbers have updated on the right hand side. That number that was previously a million across the state gives you um, the number of households um, with no broadband connection for Erie County. And now you can kind of hover over the different census tracts and get a sense of um, you know, high and low areas, in this case with computing devices. So this, again, this specific map looks at devices. So um, you can see that, you can, you can see again, all of the numbers um, across the, the portal have uh, automatically updated. Now, one feature I wanna point you to that's um, uh, consistent on this and the next tab is, let's say you wanna download and share this data. If you click this little button down here in the right-hand corner, you can download as an image, uh, as a PDF, um, or as a PowerPoint. And, and then um, if you, if you wanna share, you can also um, get links and embed codes for your website. So you can actually uh, have different ways to share this data um, out with your community or with, you know, um, with funders, with municipal officials, whoever sort of the audiences that you're looking at. So, so this is just like a quick overview of, of this first tab, the home tab. Now, if I'm gonna transition over to the second tab of the portal, it's called race, ethnicity and services. And if you click that, we're gonna still stay at the level of Erie County, because that's what we've selected um, over here. You can see county still says Erie. So all of these numbers here again are for Erie. Now, um, again, what you'll notice here on the left is the map now has changed. Um, we're now, instead of looking at the, uh, the presence of devices, we're looking at the, number, the percentage of households with broadband. So blue indicating uh, you know, higher percentage of households with broadband, and then um, orange indicating um, you know, the, the, uh, you know, a, a lower percentage with broadband. Um, so again, you can kind of mouse over, see what the stats are for, um, you know, specific census tracts. So that's a unit that comes straight from the Census Bureau. And I should take a moment to just say all of the data that we've collected, we don't use the FCC form, um, but we do pull from the US Census. Um, particularly, they have a data set called the American Community Survey or ACS. Um, this is data that kind of rolls out in, um, we're using the five-year increment. So I think it's up to date as of uh, 2020. So um, actually just this past January, there was a new data release. So um, Rustia Cornell is sort of in the process of updating this uh, map with the new data, uh, with the new data set. Um, but now on the second tab, you'll notice instead of having sort of five indices like we did before, we've got seven different um, sort of indices or, or data windows. Um, we've got um, sort of the, what, we, what, we, what, what are the, the upload and download speeds um, that are advertised um, versus observed. Um, so you can see kind of a big discrepancy between you know, what's advertised. Um, you know, so um, in Erie County, the average advertised speed is uh, 886 megabits, but you know, the observed is actually closer to 71. Um, and then we can also get a sense of what is the uh, minimum monthly price for broadband um, so, you know, we can see what, like, what's the most common. So 54% of the census tracts um, uh, have a minimum plan of $67. But when you hover over the different, um, the different census tracts, and again, I'm using this term, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with it, but a census tract is basically just a geographical unit that the Census Bureau uses to analyze data. Um, so you can see, you know, as you hover over, what are, the, what are the different minimum monthly plans? Um, in addition, there's um, you know, two indices here around race. So you can look at you know, what, is the, what is the population by race? And then what is the population without broadband at home by race? So you can see sort of this uh, disproportionate impact of digital inequities. Um, you know, in this case for Erie County, for example, if we're looking at the uh, Black or African American population, it's about 13% 13 13 of the population, but it makes up nearly a quarter of uh, the population without broadband. Um, and then we have sort of further breakdowns around um, 
you know, the, the group population uh, without broadband at home. So these two tabs that I've just gone over, they're, they're built on the same platform. It's called Tableau. <clears throat> um, it has the same sort of um, all the different levels of, um, of, of geographical analysis uh, that, you know, on both tabs. And they both do on-the-fly calculations, meaning that if you zoom in to specific geographies, it'll update. So just to give you an example of that, we were looking at the whole Erie County, but what I'm gonna do is um, zoom in to a specific uh, Buffalo zip code. So I'm gonna uncheck this on the zip code front. It's gonna go blank and I'm gonna pick 14201. And uh, after a minute, it zooms in just to that area. So that might be a little bit uh, disorienting to see that zip code sort of like that. So if you want to zoom out, you can, and you can kind of see which part of Buffalo we're looking at. Um, and then you'll see all the numbers kind of update for that zip code. Um, so the final tab um, I want to show you before we go into the activity is if uh, up here, it's called Explore More Map Layers. And if you click that, you're going to see a different format. So the first two were on the, based on a platform called Tableau. This is built on ESRI. Um, and so ESRI is a major GIS uh, uh, provider of GIS services. Um, they, they create ArcMap, um, which is a really popular um, brand of mapping services. So what this, this gives you a little bit of a different setup. So instead of doing the on-the-fly calculation, where if you type in a zip code and zoom in all the numbers and the data update, this one gives you um, this word toggleability. It lets you toggle different layers of data on and off. So right now, what we're looking at is the entire state of New York. Um, we've got the library system, region boundaries on there. Um, we've got the libraries present. Uh, and then right now what we're mapping is the percentage of uh, the population with no computer or internet connection at home. But I can uncheck that and look at percentage of households with no devices. I can look at percentage of households just with tablets. Um, and while we can zoom into, a, zoom into a geography, so I'm just gonna hit Buffalo. I'll zoom in, but it doesn't like what you'll see is it's not giving you a firm boundary for Buffalo. It's just kind of zooming you in to, um, to just like the Buffalo area, if you will. But the power of this one is you can, you can um, uh, check and uncheck different, um, uh, different layers of data um, as well. Now, one thing I wanna point out with this that's really powerful is I'm just gonna zoom in even closer. And so, here we are, I'm just kind of looking at um, uh, just a part of Buffalo. And I think I actually have to zoom in a little bit further. Nope, I'm good. So a few things. One, let me uncheck this. I got a little ahead of myself, but um, I want to show you a few features. You, we can look at all of the sort of um, post-secondary schools. We can look at the public school location, see where they're at. And actually my favorite feature in all of this is um, this one, it's called the Exempt Organizations in New York State. So that's actually from the IRS. It's a list of every nonprofit. So you can zoom in, um, zoom into your community. Um, and, you know, here's the key on the sort of left-hand side, which tells you what kind of organizations you're looking at. And you can kind of get a sense of who's in, who's in your neighborhood. Um, here, there's a community improvement group that's focused on capacity building. You know, you can look at re uh, religious uh, institutions. That's the church right there. Um, you can you can see you know different. Uh, this one's focused on uh, housing, for instance. So this is really really powerful. Um, you know, especially for coalition work to know who's in my neighborhood, who can I reach out to. Um, you know, who are the folks that might be interested in the digital divide or might want to might want to engage in this work with us. So you can zoom into any sort of um, any part of the state and, uh, you know, dig in, dig in a little bit more to your community. Um, and I'll just add one more thing, which is that, um, you know, if you want to share a link um, to where you're at or embedded in the website, that information is down here as well. Um, so you can email, tweet about it, you know, um, post it on Facebook, um, but it gives you that ability to sort of share out this, um, this data. Um, I think before we kind of go to an activity, um, if you want to see where the data comes from, that's in the documentation tab. So I think with that, I'm going to pause um, and 
Let's see. So this is the activity, but maybe I'll just take uh, take a moment just to see if there's any questions uh, immediately um, on how to use the portal before we go into the activity, just to make sure everyone feels uh, comfortable. So um, feel free, um, feel free to uh, put them in the chat or unmute. Otherwise, you know, um, I'll give a few seconds, but otherwise we can we can go into the activity. So then let's uh, let's let's jump in then. Um, uh, so what we'd like you to do is um, go ahead, uh, choose one of the tabs. So that was um, we've got the home tab. So go back to the home tab. <clears throat> we've got the home tab. We've got race, race ethnicity, and services, and then we have explore more map layers. Um, so if you want to go ahead, go to one of those tabs, um, type your zip code, and I can do another run through of that in a sec. Um, so that you can see, um, you know, so you can see how that works. And then if you feel comfortable on mute, share what you're seeing or um, go ahead and type it in, type it in the chat. Um, but yeah, we're just kind of curious to, to get folks uh, you know, um, to hear to hear what you're seeing um, based on using this portal, um, uh, and then we can uh, and then we can sort of take it from there and go into sort of further discussion around this. But first, I just want to make sure folks are comfortable and know how to use this. So go ahead, take a minute, um, just as a refresher to do the zip code. Um, you click down here, um, and then you can type in you can type in your zip code or actually you should uncheck it first. The map will go blank. You can type what your zip code is um, and then uh, check that and that's, that'll zoom you in to where you wanna go. So not to raise questions too much, but what if your zip code isn't listed? Oh, interesting. No, I, uh, can you give me that zip code and I can let Rusty know? Uh, so it's in Cattaraugus County, not okay. Erie County, but it's 14065. When you click on 14, 042, which is Delavan's zip code that encompasses freedom, which is 14065. So, oh, interesting. Okay. It, it, it shouldn't, but it does on your map, I guess is what I'm saying. Oh, that's, I, we have not encountered that before. I'm so grateful that you raised that question. Um, and I can, I can, I can bring that over to Rusty. You said which one was the one that works? 14042, which is Delavan, works, but that lights up 14065 as well. And when you pull it up, it's two different shades of green. So it sort of recognizes it's different. Interesting, okay. And then I guess I had a question, when you pull up a zip code, does it pull up like the census tracts encapsulated inside that zip code? Or like if a portion of a census tract is within the zip code, it pulls up the whole thing as well? Yeah, great question. Um, so it should pull up um, the census tracts that, that, um, uh, that intersect that zip code. Okay, thanks. Yeah. But thank you for flagging that. Um, we have not encountered that, and I will I'll ask Rusty about that. Are other people having um, uh, better luck in terms of finding their zip codes? Uh, social demographer, so uh, I, I have a little bit of information about um, census tracts and zip codes. Um, they're actually completely different uh, data units, so uh, right. the same census tract can actually ex or uh, can exist in multiple zip codes, So because, you know, the uh, zip codes are defined by the Postal Service and census tracts are defined by the Census Bureau uh, for wildly different purposes. Uh, so uh, there is not going to be a one-to-one -one correspondence, like a zip code isn't going to neatly end uh, encapsulate census tracts. So that's just something to note. All right, thank you, Don. Um, great, and Regina found yours. Anything you wanna share, Regina? And in general, are folks uh, feeling comfortable with the interface and um, utilizing the portal just in terms of, yeah, in terms of functionality, in terms of usage? 
Yes, awesome, great, Amy. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, great, and for folks who hadn't seen this type of, um, you know, uh, uh, sort of data tool, do you feel comfortable or does this still feel, does this still feel um, a bit overwhelming in terms of um, using the portal or in terms of accessing the different um, data? Uh, Hamano, go it's... ahead and uh, sh share the results of that earlier poll as well, just so we oh, can see where the baseline was, uh, and then folks can chime in. Awesome, thank you. Okay. So looks like the majority of folks are kind of, uh, well, plurality, I'll say. Uh, we're kind of right in the middle, like either comfortable or uncomfortable about it. A little more than a quarter are comfortable, a little less than a quarter, a little less than 20% are uncomfortable. And we got uh, about 11% that are apparently uh, census data mapping tool rock stars. Mm. Nice. Great. Thank you, Don. Um, I guess, yeah, for the folks that are feeling more uncomfortable, have you moved to neutral or higher? <laughs> or does it, um, I, I saw Amy, thank you for your comment in there. Um, and it does take, it does take a little bit of playing around to get comfortable with, um, you know, uh, with the features and um, yeah, with the way it sort of works. I, I agree completely with Amy's comment. And I had, I had said I'm uncomfortable, but I think, first of all, it's fun. And secondly, um, yeah, I think with some time and really figuring out what I'm actually looking at and looking for, um, using it doesn't seem terribly difficult. Awesome, thank you for that. Appreciate that, um, appreciate that, Matt. Um, and I see, I see Jeff's question, yes. So um, under tutorials, there's a walkthrough uh, video um, that's just kind of, um, there's no sound, there's no audio to it, but it just kind of walks you through, um, uh, you know, how, how, to, how to, you know, how to access different features and, and use it as well. Great. Um, and so just to check in, uh, any other thoughts around like what you're seeing in terms of um, data that comes out um, from, from your zip or um, at other layers that you've, you've um, engaged with? I remember when we did, as part of the development of this, we did focus groups. Um, so I remember someone sharing that, you know, I knew it was bad in my community. I didn't realize it was this bad because they could finally for the first time see, um, see the numbers, see the actual data on, on, the, on the portal. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Hi, sorry, I switched over here because I couldn't, my audio wasn't working when I switched this one. Um, I apologize if, if you had answered this question already. So the, who is your intended user for this map again? Awesome. Um, so when we started, it was, um, uh, it was for librarians. Um, so okay. for librarians to pull this data. Um, when we did focus groups, though, we broadened it out to, um, you know, our network of partners that do digital equity work. Um, so these aren't organizations that are um, like, ex like explicitly have digital equity in their mandate, but um, they found themselves over the course of the pandemic doing this type of work. Um, so our primary users are librarians and then um, uh, sort of uh, community based organizations. Okay. And um, so for a librarian itself, like what is it that they are going to be able to take away from it? Like what are, what, what's their intended actual use to do with it once they've looked up their zip codes and figured out that this information? Great, yeah. So one of the main drivers we heard um, from the state library is that like, for instance, they wanted to make sure that like they could get like different um, New York state uh, library systems um, could get a sense of like, what does the digital divide look like in their library system? So here I just picked Ramapo Catskill um, system so that they can say, okay, I know in my community about 40,000 people, households, I should say, um, lack, lack broadband, um, lack of broadband connection. 
at home. So um, that was a primary thing. And I think a main driver of that was that, you know, they were looking at ARPA funding and other sort of funding. And I think this is this is true, not just for the library system, but for other organizations that are looking to seek funding, particularly as, um, you know, there's funding coming from the um, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, IIJA coming in, to be able to paint, paint a data story or a data portrait of what the digital divide looks like in their community. Okay, so um, so that's great. Thank you so much for doing such a concise answer uh, to be able to see because the, and it does it does a great job of being able to show like the digital like, divide what it um, looks like from that perspective. Um, my next question is from that is um, along the way, you know, you find out that so that was the librarians; they were your main target audience. What was your your personal favorite discovery that you found that other people could leverage this for, and or that other people are going starting to leverage this for? Yeah, I think my favorite feature is that um, nonprofit um, sort of map. When you can zoom in um, to an area um, and sort of pull up all of the nonprofits in your area, because when we talk about coming online in, you know, in digital equity scholarship, it's about communities coming online together. Um, it's about you know working in coalition. It's about knowing who's in your digital equity ecosystem. So it's definitely this tab right here. Um, this layer. Okay. I also have a, an answer if that, if I could chime in. Please. Um, before I worked at CTNY, I worked for a community organization serving Southeast Asian uh, folks in New York. And uh, we found that, I wish we had had this because we found that like all of our outreach and comms, it was like really difficult to figure out like which to connect with, um, our, like to do community uh, outreach. And I think this is good because it shows you like wh which mobile users are, um, where like there's mobile access versus uh, landline access or like the broadband access. Um, Cause in, in like in Asian specific organizing circles, a lot of folks only have a mobile phone. So to see which neighborhoods like we could actually do um, like over internet, or, like on their mobile phone versus on their computer. So that, that would have been like a nice usage if I had had it. Very cool. Um, I'm just curious, can this show um, like whether like the types of internet like versus broadband versus, is that what you were just saying? And yeah, yeah, it can. Okay. Yeah, can so if you, yeah, so it's right here, it's on this first tab on home. So um, again, I'll just kind of zoom into Erie County, um, but when you do that, you'll see the, the selected devices by household. So 12%, no computing device. Oh, sorry, you were asking about, no, no, you're asking about devices, excuse me. So you can see um, the, the presence of uh, different devices. Actually, um, so I was looking at, um, okay, so hypothetical question, kind of not fairly specific. If you were, um, say you're a Gen Zer that's coming into uh, Buffalo, you know, and I'm like trying to find out where I want to put my apartment, can I figure out which areas have high speed internet versus which areas don't? Yeah, you can, so you can look at, so there's, I think there's two parts of that question. I think one part is like, you can look at and see like within that community, what's the, mm -hmm. what's the presence of um, connection type. So I think what'll help you answer that is both like understanding, like just generally, like in that, in that, in whatever geography you're looking at, whether it's zip code or county, um, like where the higher or lower rates are. Um, but mm -hmm. then the other thing that kind of helps with that is um, like just like understanding like what's the what are the prices? Because um, we know obviously cost is a, is a major factor um, to, to, to getting online. So understanding like what's, what, what's, what does it look like from a cost basis as well? So I think those two pieces of uh, information um, help with that. Okay, and I just have one also last see. Comment. Oh, sorry. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I think go you ahead, can also Ollie. see pro projected speeds and actual speeds of upload mm -hmm. and download above the cost. Yes. Uh, okay, and um, which tab are we on for this one, can you see? This one is uh, race, ethnicity, and services. It's the second. Okay, race, ethnicity. Um, I do want to congratulate you on, on a number one. This is it's a Nazare, right? Like this is <laughs> everything is, is really well done. I like I like what you have here, um, and I do appreciate that when you hover over when you when I looked by my zip code, I saw that my um, my state representatives like for my area were listed, 
And I really appreciated that little feature of the, like, what can I do about it in terms of this? Yeah, um, thank you. I forgot to mention that. I really appreciate that. On the S3 tab, yes, everyone, if you hover over the track, you'll get um, a lot of data about um, your representatives. Um, and you can sort of- phone numbers? Yeah. Uh, it, it does. I don't think it does. Um, but yeah, if you see, you can get your congressional representative, um, you know, at this uh, at the state level. Um, but like a lot bigger, bigger data breakdown as well. Um, thank you, Kim, and thank you, Don. Uh, I just saw your question. So we have some some next steps in terms of where we want to go with the portal. One of them is um, adding more um, uh, data layers. So um, we had heard. Um, you know, this, this is a, that's a great layer that you suggested adding um, around, um, around um, sort of disability. We were also looking at things like eviction uh, data as well, housing data. So that's, that's sort of like next steps is like finding more, um, uh, yeah, more data layers that we want to add. Um, I do want to transition. Yes, we can happily share our email. Um, we did talk, I think, about this first question, but I'm going to hand it over to An. Um, just in this uh, next five or ten minutes to to take us through some of the some of the discussion questions. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just think it would be great to get your. I think we already kind of got everyone's impressions, but um, also curious to see like, do you think knowing this data could impact your work and um, any initial reactions to that? We all, yeah, we just want to be able to make sure that this is a useful tool that people actually want to use it. <laughs> And if, uh, if, if you don't want to talk, you can also type in the chat. Um, just, and if you're not, oh, go ahead. Yeah, this is Rolanda. You know, I think data is always our best friend. And I think we can't, we can't identify what strategies will work best in community unless we see this data, right? And, you know, um, I, I actually, as I'm watching this presentation, I can't wait to give an assignment to my interns to actually analyze the census tracts that we've been targeting regarding our COVID data. So um, our COVID work rather. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm super excited about it. And I, and I already can see a project that we're gonna push out in order to inform our community about the status um, of access that folks have here, um, up here in Niagara County. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I am excited that you are excited. <laughs> Any other comments? Oh, I see. What's your plan for sharing this with a wider audience? Um, so initially we did a uh, like a press release and a bit of like a, a launch with social media, but uh, we do have social media assets that I could share with everyone after this. And then you can share it on your social media. There's like sample tweets and stuff so that you don't have to like do the work of writing that. Um, so that's like an initial thing. We are maybe, I don't, I don't know if you, you wanna jump in, but we do have like future plans for this, like um, th like this initial stage finished, but we wanna expand and make it, you know, more accessible to folks and have it be in more community hands. Yeah, thank you. And just, um, you know, aside from adding more data layers and adding features like a time slider to see how things change over time, one of our main things is um, we really want to, you know, not have this sort of be just like, uh, you know, a link that sits on a server that kind of collects dust over there. We really want to have like a two-way flow of information between what folks are actually seeing on the ground versus the data. Because, you know, as I pointed out, there's a couple year lag. This doesn't account for COVID, you know, the, 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 data, uh, the data layers. Um, so we want to engage um, in a process of doing data storytelling with different community groups. So we're sort of looking for resources around that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we want to take it is like, how do we, how do we make it a two-way flow? And how do we sort of like, again, this is now, this is now sort of really big picture thinking and dreaming around this, but like, can we find a way to like create sort of local login pages for community groups to set up an account to then upload their own stories, histories, photos, videos, whatever it is, like share that so that you've got a really rich map that's not just like pure census tract information or pure, pure census data numbers 
and percentages, which are really important. But then there's also obviously the qualitative, the human element, the story element. And those are the things that we really want to highlight. Um, but this we see is like the first step for, for doing that, right? Is like, let's get, let's get our, our quantitative ducks in a row and then we can sort of move into, move into the data story and like how the, how the, two, how the two elements um, um, in, in intersect. Yeah, Human, and I, I also, I also okay. just wanted to really, um, uh, I really want to appreciate and elevate the comment you just made about the, the value of getting the stories, um, because one of the things that we also know just from social psychology and, you know, behavioral science is that uh, if somebody has an entrenched point of view and you present them with data, it doesn't usually change their mind. It causes them to become more entrenched in their existing point of view. So the ability to provide story to help sort of dislodge uh, entrenched narratives, I think, is really valuable. So the uh, the opportunity to really enhance the data side with the story side uh, is going to make it an even more powerful tool. So I love that. Thank you for making. Absolutely, thank you, Don. And just to, just to add one more point, and you're absolutely correct. And people, what changes people's mind necessarily? Uh, help, what helps change people's mind is like hearing information from folks they trust. So if they know the person in their community is experiencing this, that's different from like, oh, you know. X percent is, is affected by this. Uh, and I guess this also we kind of addresses this question more of like a self reflective or as you were as you work with the portal like how could you use this to advance your your current digital equity efforts um, ways you could use it to engage with the community which I think the storytelling aspect kind of addresses. Um, but if you have reactions to this question, feel free to share. And Matt, I'm really happy for your grant writer. <laughs> that should make life a lot easier. <laughs> so I know American Fact Finder, what used to be American Fact Finder was um, kind of a difficult interface. Would it be okay if I shared the like, personal experience? Like for the dashboard from like this kind of thing? Awesome. Thank you, Kim. I, we could kind of hear you. I think that we were having some audio issues. Um, um, so you might want to reframe some of that in the chat if that's okay. But what I heard was um, you were you, you actually used this portal with health workers. Is that right? Used a version. Of a version. Okay. We, we um, had one at Puff State that we made two years ago. Um, so that had, that it was very much Yes. So you could you so in a in a different mapping portal that was similar, you could um, drill down into it. But then the issue was like it was it wasn't clear what you could do next with it, or like how to do comparisons with it as well, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks. The comparison front was something um, that came up, I think, in either one of our focus groups or one of our earlier uh, presentations, and that's something we're really looking at. So, like for example, we know what the cost of um, services say, like the minimum plan. But what does that mean? What does that mean, like relative to say? The median income or the median monthly income, like what fraction of the income would you have to pay um, for for broadband? So we we are thinking about comparative services, um, and I think your your point is a really good one about like okay, so then what what next, right? Like so you have this data, like where can you take it next? Um, and so I think some of that we'd love to just kind of address by like you know um, doing the community storytelling or the data storytelling so that folks can have a package have set either, I don't know if it's talking points or just have the story down combined with data and then be able to, to share that more broadly. 
Um, and I think that can lead us into our next question, which is what support. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Which is what what other support could you need to be able to fully utilize the portal now that you've kind of been able to play with it a little bit? Um, any immediate things that might come to mind? I'll just say like uh, this last question that you uh, that the comment that was brought up around comparisons I think it's important for to share out what might we be looking for um, when we're actually trying to um, uh, identify what the community need is so um, you know like to to give examples of what we should be looking for when it comes to digital equity. You know what I mean? Like I'm new to this conversation. So around digital equity only because of this space here. So I don't have all the tools to understand what it is I should actually be looking for. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think because uh, I, we've, we, I think when we were developing this, we also had conversation about like, what does digital justice, digital equity mean and how do, can we actually um map that out like adoption rate of how many it, like the services available but people aren't using it versus um just uh, like availability so yeah that would be that's a good like thing to add like definitions or kind of like a guide on metrics so thank you for that yeah uh plus one plus one to that and uh sorry i couldn't see your name it's not popping up but um thank you thank you for that comment Great, so I know we're coming up right at time. Um, we will follow up, this is a link, but we'll follow up um, by email after this. Don, I'll send you an email with some follow-up resources. It'll have the survey link, as well as um, some of the social media tools that uh, unreferenced earlier. Um, but um, thank you everyone, uh, really appreciate your time. Um, and I'll turn it over back to Don. <laughs>